Hello everyone and welcome to another Simple Science video. And in this video, we will talk about chemical equations and more importantly, how to balance chemical equations. Alright, so one of the problems that I had encountered when I first did my IGCSEs or first studied for my IGCSEs in year 10, I couldn't grasp the fundamental process of balancing a simple chemical equation. I couldn't get basically a process that I could just stick with in order to solve not uh, solve, but to balance a chemical equation. Now, when you do progress to higher studies, such as in A-levels, the skill of balancing chemical equations is a very important skill that you must be able to do very quickly. So, it's very important, important to develop this ability. And, and, I'm sorry to make it seem such a, like a, such a grand ability, but you know, it's a very important uh, skill. And it is very important because you may you must be able to find the correct ratio between the atoms and elements within your uh, chemical equations in order to solve uh, problems with greater marks that involves basically moles and basically in the realm of stoichiometry. All right, so you must get this one right first in order to progress into bigger and more um, questions that will uh, have greater marks. All right, so. A chemical equation, just like a mathematic equation, represents a chemical reaction, but instead of a relationship between two variables, we have the relationship between atoms of different elements that form the, the reactants from the product. And the form, the general form in which our chemical equations exist in is the product leading to a reactant through a condition for one, basically, five-inch on average equation, right? They can exist as two forms. They can exist as a basic intelligible word equation that basically has the written out word uh, elements and compounds. Or it can be seen as a simple equation where you basically use the symbols of the elements and compounds instead of the words, all right? So we use simple equations because it shows us a clearer ratio between the atoms that form the products and the reactants. And the very important thing that I talked about earlier was that this ratio is always fixed. This will be very important in solving stoichiometry questions. And the fundamental process that you must be able to grasp early on is to balance chemical equations. So in order to basically represent my, my method that I recommend that you do use, because I think it does work most, well, all the time for me, at least in my experience, is I need to show you an example. I need to talk you through an example. All right, so the example that we're going to talk through is the reaction between magnesium and water. All right, so the first thing I want you to do is to write down the word equation. Now, this is where you have to use your qualitative your qualitative chemistry knowledge to understand what is happening. All right. So what happens when this reacts with that? So magnesium reacting with water. Now that is a basic single displacement reaction whereby magnesium replaces the hydrogen in the water and basically kicks out the hydrogen to form hydrogen gas and the magnesium takes its place to form magnesium hydroxide. All right. And the second thing I want you to do after writing your word equation is to replace the words for symbols. Don't balance, any, don't balance anything yet. Just replace the words for symbols. As you can see, um, this the equation is not balanced. So you have to basically form a table. Form a table, you know, either write this down or form it in your mind and see whether the number of atoms on each side are equal. Now this is where it becomes more a trial and error process that you can't really avoid. All right? Well. <coughs> you can by just basically trying and playing around with the numbers that go in front of the atoms or elements, basically the coefficients, all right, so that your table has matching numbers top and bottom, all right. So it's very important that you must be able to form this table, this table of the number of atoms for each respective element that form the products and reactants in your mind so that l you can compare the number of atoms and uh, atoms of elements. So 
by changing numbers, you will have to change to find the correct numbers in front of your species so that the atoms of the respective elements have, are, are basically equal in number. All right? So that's basically it. You basically form the table, and then you compare, and you trial and error with the numbers in order to get the same number of atoms for each respective element for the reactants and products. And the last thing you would have to do is to state the symbols. It's very important to be able to show the examiner that you have, you, you know what is going on. All right. So you, you understand the physical, the the physical, um, the presence, the physical presence in which these uh, these species will exist. So to show you another example, we can have the reaction between calcium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. That's a basic neutralization reaction to form water. Right, so I'd write the word equation down and then I follow up with a simple equation unbalanced and I would compare the number of atoms respectively for the reactants and products and I play around with the numbers. I play around the numbers so that the table that I form will have matching numbers. All right? Form the tables, ladies and gentlemen. Form the table. All right? Last thing I have to do is to basically fill in the state symbols. Right? Remember, form the table form the table, either writing it down or after a thorough practice, you you form the table in your mind. Okay? So now the reaction would be the composition of sodium carbonate. And you write it down. Uh, but in this case, you see that the respect the, the, the number of atoms for the, each respective element for the products and reactants are the same. So therefore you don't you don't change the, the symbol equation. That is your correct balanced equation. Another example, our final example, would be uh, making ammonia, for example, where nitrogen and hydrogen react to form ammonia in, in the Haber process, right? So you write down the, the respective, you write down the respective elements and the compounds formed, and you compare the numbers, and you see, oh, wait, there's two times as many nitrogen and uh, three, uh, yeah, <laughs> um, there you go. You see that. I must play with the numbers in order to get the total, uh, the, the respective number of atoms for each element for the products and reactants to be the same. So play around with the numbers and basically compare the tables, all right? Compare it in your mind. And that's, um, that's something you'd have to do, is to form a table in your mind, all right? After a while, because... Um, well, it does take a lot of time during your, uh, during your uh, exams, and you must be able to do it quickly so you don't waste time, all right? You don't waste time, you don't waste precious time, because I know for sure that the IGCSE chemistry exam is not very long, all right? So the final thing you have to do is to state the state symbols, and that's pretty much it. Ladies and gentlemen, form the table, all right? Form the table and compare the numbers.